I just have the privilege of sharing what I feel God wants to kind of open up this conference with uh, in a few moments. And we're going to go to the Bible together because that's what we've built our lives around. Uh, we do not believe that you can find all the intricacies in life in so many other places and philosophies. There's only one place you can find it, and it's in the Word of God. That same book actually says that it's alive and active, which means you've probably read books before, but this book actually reads you. And there's a difference. I know there's, it's being proliferated in culture right now that you can find your own truth. Well, I'm here to tell you, young person, that's a lie. You can't find your own truth because it's already been written. And if you want to build, have dominate in life and be successful, you build your life around this book. Somebody say amen. amen. So I want to look at a character in the Bible, a really popular figure in Scripture. And the reason why I want to look at him is because where we find him in this text is I believe where many of you find yourselves right now, not just culturally, but personally coming into this weekend. So I want to go together to the book of Daniel. So if you have a Bible, if you brought one, either digital or analog, if you got, if you got old school Bible, I can't even play if I'm saying that, but if you have an actual Bible, can you wave it at me? Can you do that? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And can we do this? Just a tradition I like to do. Can you just appease me? Can we stand together for the reading of God's word? The Bible says the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. You know what that means? Trends are going to change. Your clothes, they're going to get, just, just wait for it, okay? Just wait for it. I can't wait till you guys have kids one day and they're going to be making fun of you for having an iPhone. Oh my gosh, dad, you had an iPhone? Oh my gosh, you're such a nerd. I can't believe you actually had an iPhone. Why they answer their phone by tapping their temples or something like that, right? <laughs> Trends are going to change. Fashion's going to change. But the word of God never changes. Amen? Yeah. Daniel chapter 1. And I just want to read a portion of a verse here in a moment. But here's the background quickly to this verse. Daniel finds himself in an interesting place. He's actually from another country. And he's been taken captive along with so many other countrymen and been forced into a different culture. And when he's in that culture, he and some of his other cronies actually got picked out of all the other people that have been captive for a special duty to be amongst the king's court. And so they even all the more were forced to learn a different language. They were forced to um, adapt to all these aspects of culture and even coming down to eating certain foods. And here's where we find Daniel in the text when he's being told to fit in to the mold of this culture. Check out Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. I love this. It says, but Daniel, in the midst of all that he's being told to do, was determined, had purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. That word purposed means to make a decision. It means to determine in your heart that he would not, and that word defile actually means pollute. And the word pollute means to mix something of not normal nature in with. He had purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Before you're seated, I want to tell you two things. One, I want to share from this topic today, cancel culture. And not the cancel culture that you're hearing about. I mean like the real cancel culture. Like how we need to start canceling the culture that puts labels and lies and it's led to all kinds of compromise in your generation. That kind of cancel culture. Now before you see it, I want, to, I want to be faithful to something that God put in my heart. In the beginning of this year in January, God spoke to me from Luke. I was in the book of Luke and I was reading as Jesus is making his triumphal entry and God spoke to me and he said, whenever you have audience with young people, whenever and wherever you go in 2021, I want you to tell them what I just put in your heart. And I'm reading the story of Jesus making his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He's about to be crucified on your behalf. And he tells his disciples, go into the city and find me something to ride. Jesus needed a whip to come into town on. And so he goes, tells them this. He says, go in and you'll find a colt, which was a young horse, inexperienced, untrained, and young. Go find that colt, not an older not a more experienced, but a young one. This is the king of kings and lord of lords, by the way. That you don't want to get bucked off on your way to your crucifixion for the sins of the world, okay? 
But he says, no, go get the young one. And somebody's going to ask you, and if they do, they ask you, hey, what are you doing with that colt? Turn to them and say, the master has need of it. And God spoke to me and he said, son, I'm bringing a revival in the earth, the likes of which no generation has ever seen before. And it's going to be on the shoulders of the young, the inexperienced, and the ones that people might not think. It'll be the ones that'll be on the shoulders of. And here's what I feel like this weekend is about. I come by way of the Holy Spirit as your big brother to untie you this weekend and look you dead in the eyes and say, the master has need of you. We got someplace to go. Let's go. Turn to your neighbor and say, let's go. Before you're seated, I want to pray. I want to pray. I'm going to pray. Jesus, thank you so much. We need you. We want you. We ask that even for a few moments kicking off this conference, that you cause our mindsets and perspectives to be forever shifted. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. You can be seated. I like Daniel. I do, man. I like him. One of the reasons why I like him, he reminds me a lot of you. He's young. The Bible says this. He was strong. Come on, dudes. The Bible also says he was good looking. Somebody else say, okay, okay. come on. Hey, come on. Come on. <laughs> when we find Daniel, the other thing that I find interesting about him is just like you, he's in a place that's not where he's actually from. I don't know if you know this or not, young person, but you're actually not from here. And I know some of you might say, well, that's like a total no-duh, Caleb, because I don't live here in Walla Walla. No, I'm not talking about from here. I'm actually talking about how you're not from here. You're actually from somewhere else. I was showing pictures. I have two sons. And uh, my oldest just turned five years old. And we're showing pictures. This is what you do as parents, okay? So just entertain me for a moment. Guys, just listen. Girls, get ready. But I was showing him pictures of when he was first born, and I have a younger son who's three years old, and he looked at the pictures we were looking at on my older son's birthday, and he said, Dad, where was I? And I said, well, you weren't born yet. And he said, well, was I in Mommy's tummy? And I said, no, I wasn't. And then he looked at me and said, was I still in heaven? And I said, how did you know that, kid? That'll give it up for a PK right there, right? It's actually really important for you to understand, young person, that you're not from here. You're actually from there. And you actually came from there to here, and your purpose in coming here is so that you'd bring there down here. I don't know if you know this, but you can live here but not live for here. There's a difference. Now, don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I believe that God has put us here for a reason. The Bible says that we are to be salt and light in the world, but there's a difference between in the world and being of the world. Come on, somebody. It's important that you understand the purpose that you're designed with because when you don't understand your purpose, it's walking through life awkward. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody that walks around a little bit awkward. You can tell it's like they don't fit in. And I hope that some of you get this this morning from this perspective. You might not felt like you fit in and there might be a purpose behind that. Not just how you dress, but it, could it be that God has actually set you apart? Could it be that there's greatness on the inside of you and you've been playing to a lower level? <laughs> awkward. I remember years ago, I... Like I said earlier, my hip-hop name is Lil Chips and Salsa. My mom's side of the family is Hispanic, and so I love salsa. And when they ask if I want it hot, most of the time I'm like, give it to me hot, right? I like hot salsa. Well, years ago, I went out and I was on a date with a girlfriend at the time, and we had sat down, and I, when, when I go to a restaurant that I like, I'm sorry, I go ham. I just do. I just like, I have to discipline myself to not just pound some Hispanic food. So we, we're eating, and I'm just eating so much food, and we start to leave, and my girlfriend says, hey, why don't we go over to the store? I want to stop by there before you know we go someplace else, and I'm like, cool. And we start driving, and the food starts not sitting very well with me. And I don't know if you've ever had that moment where you can tell this just isn't me getting a little burpy, right? This is not being a little gassy. Like this is like, this is not feeling very good. And so it starts to kind of build on the inside. The volcano starts to build a little bit. And I'll 
I'll say it in a PG version. I just thought to myself, maybe I can let a little air out of the tire. Maybe I should say it that way, okay? Say it that way. And I just thought to myself, here I am driving with my girlfriend, and I'm just like, I just need just a, a moment. And, and then I had this moment where not, not just air just came out. And I don't know if that's ever happened to you. Most of you probably happened on the way here. But here I am driving with my girlfriend, and it's moments like that happen. You're like, okay, you're just trying to be cool anyway, right? Oh, I'm so awesome. This is so great. I got a girlfriend that's so awesome. And you're like, just play it cool. Just play it cool. And I remember saying, I had to play it out in real time for you, right? Because that's how it actually happens, right? Nobody's cool when they do something like that. Like, nothing's just suddenly cool. You're like, this is instantly not cool. So she's like, hey, maybe we should stop by this store first. And I instantly be like, no more stores. We're just, I'm just going to drop you off. We're just going to go home. This is going to be it. This date's over. She's like, it's like 2 in the afternoon. I don't care. Date's over. She's like, please, I just really want to go to this store. And I'm like, hey, do they sell men's clothes at this store? So here's the deal. We get out. We pull into the store. I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to do this. And I, <laughs> I kid you not, I get out of the car. And how do you walk cool? How do you possibly walk cool? This is me walking in. And she's like, are you okay? Why are you walking like that? And I'm like, because I'm cool. One long, one short. One long, one short. Like, right? This isn't how you roll. Is this how you do it? Like, and she, I never told her. I never told her. I played it off. I was so cool. I tried to, and the whole time she's thinking, what is actually wrong with you? It's so funny. I'll run into young people that they're trying to fit into culture, and I can see greatness on the inside of them, and I'm like, I want to walk up to them and say, do you know how awkward you look because there's greatness on the inside of you it's my favorite is when it's a youth kid and they're at McDonald's and the night before they're crying out to the, on the altar saying God will give you everything and the next day they see their pastor walk in and they're suddenly trying to ignore him and doing their best to not drop F-bombs because they're so hard trying to fit in but that's why it looks so awkward in fact I can't help but think that there was somebody that your parents let you out of being grounded just to come to this conference and the reason why you got grounded is because they caught you doing something and you wondered why how come every time I try to do something dumb I always get caught here's why I'm telling them why you always get caught because there's a call of God on your life and you even stink at sinning. God's making sure that the greatness on the inside of you doesn't get forfeited. Oh, there's purpose on the inside of you. The pressures of culture to fit in a certain way and to look a certain way and to be a certain way. But can I tell you right now, young person, culture only makes garbage. God's the only one that makes greatness. And there's so much greatness on the inside of you that he, sometimes often better than we do, the enemy of our souls knows it. And he works overtime trying to put a label on you, trying to say, this is how you are. This is the group that you need a part of. Here's how you fit in. Because the last thing he wants you to do is to know where you came from. More than that, to know whose you are. Because when you know whose you are, then you know who you are. And when you know who you are, you stop living for here and you start living for there and you start praying prayers like God. God, bring there down to here. Yeah, come on, come on. Right. It's no different for Daniel. One of the first things that they did with Daniel when they brought him into this, this closeness to the king's court, one of the first things they did was label him in an attempt to try and change his identity. And I want to look at these names that they had changed Daniel and his three friends from into a new name because I think it's indicative of what our culture is trying to put on you and speak that you're a part of even now. So check out this. I want you to look at these names. Daniel's name meant God is judge, and they changed it to Belshazzar. It says, Lady, protector the king. They literally changed his name from a guy name to a girl name. Look at Hananiah. His name is Yahweh has been gracious, and they changed it to Shadrach. I'm fearful of God. Mishael, who can compare to God? No one. Check this out. Meshach, I am despised, contemptible, and humiliated. And check this out. Azariah, Yahweh has helped. And now look at this. 
servant or slave to just some God. And just like, well, think about this for a moment, young person. Notice how everything that their original name were, were given to them, that God had spoken over their life, the, na- the new name that was given them was literally to cancel in almost exactness the name that God had spoken to their life. Yeah, that's right. And I believe God's trying, to, God's trying to do something in your generation and the enemy's working overtime to speak a different label over you, to get you thinking you're something else or being somebody else so that just like Daniel and his friends, you'll be captive to your, those labels. But I want you to see something. Here's what I think is interesting. I want you to see something about what happened to them because the scheme of the enemy is always to get you to forget who you really are. Because the real you, I'm going to go old school. I'm going to date myself for a moment, okay? I'm going to just age myself a little bit. The real you is a bad cat. The real you, the original design that God made you to be, not that kind of fake facade just trying to be somebody that you're not, but the real way God designed you, whoo! But here's what I find is unique. Daniel, check out Daniel's name. Daniel, they literally changed his name from a male name to a female name. Friend, let me tell you this. There is yet again a wave in your culture right now trying to put a label on you that's gender confused. I got good news for you. If that's how you came into this weekend, I believe God's going to transform your heart and restore original identity in you because God's not confused about it even for a moment. He's going to speak to you just how you are. Notice what it goes on to say. Check out Hananiah. They literally changed his name from how he's drawn close to God, that his name gets changed to being fearful of God. I'm telling you what, one of the labels that will try to get put on you is that you're not worthy enough to be in an environment like this. In fact, I sense that even for some of us in worship, we had a hard time lifting our hands because we're like, I can't do this. I was looking at stuff just last night after I registered for this, and here I am trying to lift those same hands that were entertaining that, putting them before God, and you just kept your hands down to your side because say, I'm not worthy, and you've literally developed a fear as though God's so mad at you, you can't come to him. Friend, can I tell you this? Why you were still a long ways off, the Bible says, that God died for you, there's nothing you can do to make him love you anymore, there's nothing you can do to make him love you any less, you Mishael, they changed his name to mean despised and humiliated. You know that label of shame has been there since the beginning? Because of what you've done? And some of us, we have this thing where we're like, we're spiritual orphans of sorts. Because we're, we're afraid that people would get to know us because when they get to know us, they're just going to leave because other people has left us and we have this abandonment thing on the inside of us and we wear this label of we're humiliated and people are just going to despise me and we're always second guessing everything. In fact, we'll have conversations with people and we'll be saying one thing with our mouth and the whole time in our mind, we're thinking, they don't even like me. Everything I'm saying is stupid. There's no way they're going to actually become a friend with me. This is the only time I'm going to see him. They say we should hang out after conference, but we, I, I know what they're not really, they don't really mean that because I'm this way and I'm this way. All in an attempt to keep you isolated and insulated. And the last one, Azariah says, they changed his name from being a son of God to being a slave of man. A lie of culture is that you are just a slave to your hormones. You're just a slave to your feelings. That's all you can ever be is just those things. Those are the things are the part. And those are the things that we just tend to wear on our lives and saying, oh, I guess that's who I am. I guess that's all I'm going to ever be. And then it goes on. And it's crazy how not only do they speak these names over him, that they speak them over Azariah. And can you imagine Azariah's recognizing this label that's trying to be put on him and how sometimes that very kind of label works its way into who we are towards God. And so for some of us, we're in worship environments like this and we go 
from just being a son, which sons just understand who they are, that they're a son or a daughter by birth, not by worth. And so we sit in worship atmospheres like this, and we're working overtime to impress him and get his attention. And hey, God, do you see me down here, please? Because that's how sons or slaves act, but sons just recognize that their God loves them no matter what. And so these are the labels that are put on them. And not only that, they have the language, they have everything else that have been spoken over them. This is what the new normal they were trying to put on them. And I lived so much of my life when I was your age, living, thinking that I was not gonna be nothing more than a summary of the labels that people had put on my life. But when I was 17 years old, my labels met my Lord. And I don't know, I'm so glad that I gotta be the first person, I'm not done yet, that I gotta be the first person in this conference to tell you that you're not just a summary of the sins that have happened in your life up to this moment, that you're not just the byproduct of your hormones. I know you have a devil that knows your name and calls you by your sin, but then you have a God who knows your sin and calls you by your name. That's the kind of God that we serve. So no, that's not who you are. There's greatness under that Bass Pro hat, young man. Sit down. In case you're wondering, yes, this is my inside voice because we're inside. <laughs> Here's why I get so excited about this. Because I've realized that when young people start making decisions according to their purpose, they start making decisions according to their purpose, not their feelings, but according to their purpose, Do you know how easy it is to say no to things that everyone else in culture is saying yes to when you have purpose? It's a whole lot easier because you realize that it's not part of your purpose, and if it's not part of your purpose, you don't want to have any part of it. That dude's just just coming around and saying, hey, girl, what's going on? And he tells you that he loves you. Girl, he's 13 years old, and that little weasel mustache that he's trying to grow, and he says he loves you. Come on, girls, you don't marry boys, you marry men. Tell that guy to take a hike. He doesn't love you. He likes the way your skin is stretched over your skeleton. Telling him he loves you is the most selfish thing he's ever said. Sorry. I love, I think it's so funny. You don't need a dare program young person to tell you to say no to drugs. Because here's what I've learned. Tripping on shrooms, police. My Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered to the heart of man the things that God has. So you can get those things out of my face. I ain't got time for that. I got somewhere I got to be. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got purpose. So I love what Romans chapter 12, verse 2, you guys know it pretty well. But I love this verse, and I want to read it to you from the passion parage phrase. I love this. Check this out. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. See, what they were telling Daniel is, Daniel, if you'll just do this. Daniel, if you'll just do this. Okay, Dal, I will. I'm going to give you a relevant example. That we have feelings and that your feelings are the truth that you need to live your life by. I love what my pastor says. Friend, listen to me. Your feelings are always real, but they're not always right. So your culture says you feel something and then they want you to put a label to it. And so you feel a certain way. You think you have a something towards something or someone and so that's you feel then instantly they want to put a label on top of it that must be who you are and they want to throw something on top of it but friend I wonder if there's going to be somebody this weekend that when culture is demanding a label from you like the woman in John chapter 8 that when they're demanding a label Jesus steps in and he just says no you just need me you don't need anything else because isn't that the there's the thing with labels with labels always come the lies the lie to Daniel, to the lie to your generation, is if you'll just do this, Daniel, you'll look like this. If you want to be popular, just do this. If you want the likes, just do this. And you know what I've learned? The devil will release the lie of just. If I can just, 
If I can just get in with that crowd, if I can just be in the, or how about he does this? He'll do it, he'll do it right in the middle of church. If I can just spend a few more years in youth group, then I'll be qualified. As though your qualification, first of all, is dependent on your actions. And second of all, you somehow reach an echelon somewhere along the line. And by the way, if we're talking about qualifications, I shouldn't even have a microphone in my hand. Don't get me wrong. Not because I'm in crazy sin or anything like that. But I was just a young kid like you. And somebody said, I think there's a call of God on your life. And I'm looking around saying, me? Me? They're like, yeah, you. The guy who's really young but looks like he hit puberty at one year old. That you, the guy who's had a beard since the third grade. That guy. Yeah, you, the guy that has the body of a CrossFit. The guy that, uh, me. <laughs> Sorry, I had to answer what you all were thinking. So it just is like not awkward anymore. Like, man, I can't. I've never seen anybody look like so ripped before. And the whole lie of just is to get you pursuing a lie. If I could just do this. Or how about this one? (laughs) You're just some kid with a pornography addiction. God can't use people like you. How about those kind of justs? How about this? You're just going to turn out just like your parents strung out on drugs and alcohol. You're You're just like them. Man, I came on assignment this weekend, in this hour, in this moment. I know, I know we should be waiting till the night, right? The night time where it's a little bit louder. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, we got to wait till the last. And then that's where the, uh, I, I'm so sick and tired of the devil's grip on your generation. It's probably the reason why 20 some years later, I'm still speaking to the lives of young people. Because I come today to break that lie off your life. No, you're not just a summary of your actions up to this point. No, you're not just a culmination of the things that labels and lies that have been spoken over to you. My Bible says those who are in Christ are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. I don't even care if you gave yourself the label. I break it today. If you're new here, yeah, this is how we do. This is how we do. Because Jesus, I think this weekend, he wants to adjust your just. He wants to adjust your just. Oh, you don't understand. I'm just a kid. It's with Daniel. I was just a kid. But if you read on, he ends up having 10 times, 10 times more influence and wisdom in the kingdom. David's, Daniel's influence from one decision actually influences the wise men that you know about in Christmas every year. Hundreds of years later, he's being put in charge of those same enchanters. And here's these godless Men coming to worship this new king. Where do you think they got that? From a man named Daniel who in chapter 1 verse 8 said that he chose and purpose in his heart not to defile himself. That's what one decision will put in. And I literally believe this from the bottom of my heart. I'm just speaking prophetically right now. I believe from the bottom of my heart there are generational curses that are being broken off of families because you as a 12-year-old, as a 15-year-old will say, God, I'm putting a stake in the ground. I'm drawing a line in the sand. This is it. It dies here with me. I know I should have got a louder amen, but you're like, man, we just feel like we're amen and all the time. Yeah, that's church. We believe a quiet church is a dead church. And I know you guys aren't dead. You're well aware and alive. I got to go. 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 But just, you're just. Because there's a woman in Mark chapter 5 that you can read about sometime for 12 years. For 12 years, can you imagine that? For 12 years, as long as some of you have been alive, she had this infirmity, constant bleeding. The Bible records that she'd been to every kind of doctor she could, tried to get as much care as she could, and she went broke from it. Some theologians I've read have said that in order to have that kind of money, she was probably married, but we don't see recorded that she was married, that somebody somewhere in the process, not only did she spend all that money, but somebody left her. According to law, she could not even be out of her own home. She might not even have, if she would have stuck to the law, anything to actually even sleep on or sit on. This constant, can you imagine the labels that it put on her life? But if you read in that story, imagine what she would have thought to herself. If I can just get into that specialist. 
If I can just get into that doctor. If I can just get in with those people. But read for your Bible, for yourself in your Bible, Mark chapter 5. Her just gets adjusted to a moment when she hears that Jesus is coming. And if he really is the messianic deliverer from the line of David, she says to herself, if I can just touch his robe. Oh, God's about to change where it used to be. If I can just do this and I can just think this and if I can just be like that, no, I can just get Jesus. And here's what I love about the story is because the story goes on. She touches Jesus. Jesus stops in his tracks. Only time in scripture, he's like, what is going on? They're like, what do you mean? What's going on? You got a bigger Bieber bubble than Bieber himself around you. What do you mean who touched you? And he starts looking for her. And when he finds her, even though she's afraid, he's not afraid. And he looks at her and I'm paraphrasing. He says, just the girl. I've been looking for that's just the cult that I was looking for so no you're not all those things no that lie is not going to be your life not anymore because the life just is like if I can just be like them and this comparison thing that we get riddled all throughout our lives here's what I hate about the lie of justice because your culture sells it to you and if you'll just do that you'll be fulfilled I have a friend who's a professional athlete. So he's around people that have more money than they can ever spend in their lifetime. And they have more media. They have people following them all throughout the city and all the time. Always getting constantly asked with questions. And they have posses. They're surrounded by people. I'll never forget a statement he made to me one time. He said, those people that have the most amount of money and are constantly surrounded by people that you think never experienced loneliness in their life. He said, they're the most, some of the most lonely people I've ever encountered. Why? Because they bought into the lie that if they can just get there, then I'll have it. And we actually think, this is what I hate about the lies, if we can just get there, then we'll find purpose, and purpose will fulfill us. Friend, you can't find purpose in a point, it's in a person, and his name's Jesus. And so we get there, and we're empty. And we even come to a conference, and we say things like, I just feel really empty. Can I tell you, friend, you're, you're actually not empty, you're, just, you're actually full, but of empty things. Because Proverbs says, in all you're getting, get understanding. That means that we're designed to get purpose, to get vision, to get value in our lives. And we've been filling it with all kinds of other getting, and we filled ourselves on those things. You know, I said chips and salsa is my favorite. And one of the hardest disciplines when you go to a Mexican restaurant is to not get full on the chips and salsa. Am I right? You'll order fajitas, which no grown person should be eating by themselves. But that's America for you. You sit down and you tell yourself, I'm just going to have a little bit of chips and salsa. They're like, do you want another basket? You're like, I shouldn't. Like, I always think it's so funny that if you're anything like me, you'll gorge yourself and then you'll just be like, I just want water. As though it's going to balance everything out, right? Like, if you're just going to eat that much food, you might as well just drink 20 Cokes at the same time, okay? I digress. But this discipline of not getting full on the chips so that you can save it for the good stuff. Come on, somebody, beat me to where I'm going. We've been getting full on the things that we think are supposed to fill us, and we're wondering why this full, we're just hungry a few moments later. That's because you filled yourself with empty things, and you come into conference even, and you're saying, how come I can't hear God? That's because you've been crunching on culture so loud that you can't hear what God's trying to speak. Can you cancel the lie of culture, stop the crunch, and let God fill you up? Worship team, Vominos, here. Unless you have skinny jeans, don't go too fast. I don't want to start a fire, okay? <laughs> oh, burn, burn, burn. I hate when I run across a 10-year-old that will say something. He's 10 years old, 10 years old. Oh, burn, dude. And I'm like, dude, my dad could beat up your dad. <laughs> Sorry. All the labels and the lies are all attempts to get you to compromise. The compromise occurs. Here's what compromise occurs. Compromise occurs when our calling is met with inconsistency. See, the, the scheme of the enemy to get you out of your calling because he's so intimidated by the effectiveness that you'd be able to have 
is to get you inconsistent in your calling. So he'll do anything he can. He'll distract you. He'll use digital devices. He'll use cute girls in class. He'll use the cute boy in biology. He'll do everything he can to get you distracted. Because the last thing he wants you to do is to get focused on him, so on Jesus, so that he'll get everything he can to keep you distracted. You know, I've learned he'll do it right now. Some of you are still thinking about salsa, and that's my bad. But you're still thinking about like, hey, I wonder, do you think, do you think they'll have chips and salsa at the break? I mean, that sounds really good. I mean, that was my hip-hop name. It was Chips and Salsa. I thought that was so cool. Like, it's just crazy, the little things. That's why anymore when I preach, I feel like I'm not preaching, I'm not teaching, I'm imparting. It's like even if you don't have your ears open, I'm going to bypass your ears and go right into your soul. And the inconsistency brings a consistency. Think about what I'm saying because I'm going to land this plane. The inconsistency of walking in your calling actually brings a consistency. You establish a new normal. Let me prove it to you. There's some of you that believe in lies so long that you actually have forgotten what the truth is. You actually think that that's the truth. Especially when you have friends saying, oh, that's totally who you are. That's totally who you are. Like, oh, that must be totally who I am. Can I say something to that? Friends, I know what somebody might, I know what your friends are saying to you, and I know what your feelings are saying to you, but do you know what God's saying to you? Do you know what the word of God is saying to you? That's what's most important. So we find a consistency in our inconsistency, and we establish this new normal. But here's what I think. I think I'm in a room of young people that are actually really sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's what I think. I think they're actually ready to cancel the lies that have been spoken over their lives. I, cancel culture and what it's trying to speak over you. But Daniel had a choice. <laughs> you know, I, I like this story of Daniel because it doesn't say in verse 7 that the heavens opened up and divine inspiration came down from heaven and an angel came down and gave him some special elven cloak that he could put on his shoulders and suddenly he had the power to not defile himself. No, it just says Daniel just made a choice. And you know what his choice was? There, not here. There, not here. And his normal changed. Do you want to know what your normal is supposed to be? I know you have a new normal of just discouragement and depression and oppression, all that kind of stuff. Anxiety, worry, even at your young age, statistics are through the roof. Even suicidal tendencies. CDC just came out with a study last week. Teenage suicide went through the roof in 2020 because of the isolation and the oppression that came. That kind of, do you want to know what your normal is supposed to be? It's actually found in Romans 12, verse 1. We read Romans 12, chapter 2, but Romans 12, verse 1, throw it up on the screen really quick. That we are to be called, this is supposed to be your normal. So brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies, to give your opinions, to give your feelings to God for all that he has done. And check out what it goes on to say. Let them be holy, let it be a holy and living sacrifice, the kind that you will find acceptable. This is the truly way to worship. This is your new normal. This is what your original normal was supposed to be, and culture sold you a lot. And I'm so sorry, and I'm so empathetic towards that. But you have a choice this weekend if you're going to live by this world's normal or by that normal. And I'll never forget, last story of the night, I'll never forget when I was in junior college. I know it still looks like I'm in junior high, but when I was in junior college, I remember leaving one of my music classes and I was going into a philosophy class and I was walking into the library and there's a bunch of people standing in front of the library and they had boxes and they were handing something out. And I literally were thinking in my mind, oh, it's probably the Jehovah's Witnesses handing out Bibles. God bless those guys. I love it. So as I get closer, I realize that they're giving them these things and I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I thought they were just like little candies. And so I catch eyes with this guy just as I'm walking up, and he reaches into his box and gets a handful and goes to hold them out to me. And when he goes to hold them out, I realize that it's a handful of condoms. And I realized in that moment I had a choice just like Daniel. 
He was trying to tell me, bro, this is who you are. You can't control your hormones. This is your normal. Let me help a brother out. And I had a choice, just like you have a choice this weekend. I had a choice in that moment. Is this going to be my normal or is that going to be my normal? I don't know about you, but is there some young people in the room that are ready for the narrative of their normal to shift? I know you came here discouraged, but you're leaving here full of purpose. I know that Netflix and chill with another guy. You might as well stand up, not just because we're done, but because we're praising God. I know Netflix and chill was what you did every week, but how many know it's about to change? I know you were sexting somebody on the, on the van ride here. But how many of you know the narrative of your normal is about to shift? No, it doesn't end this way, young person. It doesn't end this way. You've learned, if you've learned anything from Marvel movies, you've learned when the credit starts to roll, you don't leave the movie theater. So no, your life doesn't end in shame and discouragement. Stick around, because there's an alternate ending. Oh. 